Coming up on NYMR TV, the North Yorkshire Moors Railway revs up for a vintage vehicle weekend and it's a real family affair. I was eight when this car was built. So we grew up with them, my mum and dad always had one. Uh, from right from when I was born, I've always had Capris and as soon as I passed my driving test, it's all I wanted. And we get a unique look behind the scenes at filming for the next series of Great British Railway Journeys. We've got an exclusive interview with the presenter, Michael Portillo. You know, our railways developed during the Victorian period, higgledy piggledy. There was no control, uh, many routes were duplicated. And I don't think you could really expect that the railway network that grew up in the Victorian era, before anyone had a car, could survive in exactly the same way through to the 1960s. NYMR is busy preparing for its hugely popular Vintage Vehicle Weekend, which this year takes place on the 10th and 11th of July, when dozens of exhibitors from all over the UK and from all eras will be bringing their prides and joys to show them off at stations along the line. For the Dadswells, it's a real family affair. Not only are they all volunteers on the railway, but they collect vintage cars too. Ford Capris are their speciality. Iconic cars like these were the must-have modes of transport in TV shows like The Professionals. The Dadswells own six and will be putting four of them on display throughout the Vintage Vehicle Weekend. It started with the, the red car, which was purchased when we soon, soon after we came to live here. And that was a legacy of uh, Jean having had a Mark I Capri back in the 70s when we first met. And we, we just find them fun to drive. The Vintage Vehicle Weekend is, is a fantastic day out for us all. I run the White Rose Capri Club, which is based in North Yorkshire, although we have members all over the county, in, including into West Yorkshire. And um, it seems to be the one event that they all want to come to, and it's a real big gathering of our club members, plus all the other car owners that we see year after year, and it's, it's just friends meeting again and very, very interesting for the travelling public. We get a lot of people. If I had a pound for everybody who says, oh, I had one of these cars or I always wanted one, I'd be wealthy. <laughs> it's it's a, a, just a fantastic weekend. Modern cars don't really do it for me. The old cars you really have to drive. Them. The modern cars have things like power steering, uh, air conditioning. These have none of those. It's more fun, you're more involved with the drive. And you can work on them yourself and play about with them, whereas a modern car you have to take it to a dealer. Uh, costs a lot more money. I learned as a motor mechanic years ago and I do all my own work on them now, which saves me a fortune in garage builds. As soon as I pass my driving test, it's all I wanted. I saw one locally, bought it and still got it now. At the start of June, the North Yorkshire Moors Railway was host to former Cabinet Minister Michael Portillo. He was making a new series of the popular BBC television programme Great British Railway Journeys. The programme is based on the Bradshaw, the 19th century guide to the railways of Britain. The production company owns an original copy which Mr Portillo carries around with him when filming. In an exclusive interview for NYMR TV, Michael Portillo talked about our heritage line, his decision to save the Settle Carlisle Railway from closure when he was in government, and how rail enthusiasts love to spot the mistakes on his TV series. Well, I'm very pleased to be travelling on what is now the most visited heritage railway, the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. And it, it makes part of a wonderful tourist package, if you like, because you can't rely on railway enthusiasts alone. And what better way to see the scenery than from a compartment being uh, pulled along by a steam engine. It just makes a wonderful part of a day out or a weekend or, or even a week's holiday. Beautiful. I very much enjoy travelling by train, but I'm not by any means a train buff. I'm just about old enough to remember steam engines in regular service. In fact, I do. I used to go up to Scotland to my grandparents' house and we used to take steam trains across the Isle of Wight. That was our other annual holiday. So I grew up with steam trains, and I, I, and I love trains, but I've never been a buff. I've never really been able to distinguish one locomotive from another, I'm, I'm afraid. Except very briefly when I was uh, Minister of State for Transport, then I had to know the difference between a Class 321 and a Class 319, but I've forgotten all that stuff now. 
Bradshaw says of this root that it's uh, highly scenic. Uh, he talks uh, with particular pleasure about the Vale of Newton and about Gothland. He says that it's full of interesting, rugged, uh, picturesque scenery. So he's brought me here today and I'm full of enthusiasm to see what, what Bradshaw wrote about. Because it's interesting travelling on this line, having been enclosed in the Beeching era by BR, you actually saved the Settle Carlisle Railway, didn't you, when you were in government? Do you think that perhaps this should have been saved as well? It fell to me to make the judgment as to whether British Rail should be allowed to close the Settle Carlisle Railway line, uh, and I agonised over it. And it was difficult because, you know, we were telling British Rail at the time they had to be economic, and yet, on the other hand, we had an appreciation of British heritage and particularly railway history. Anyway, all that worked out very fortunately. Now, as for this line, I can't tell. I haven't studied the numbers. What, what I would say is I think some people get a bit over-romantic. You know, our railways developed during the Victorian period, higgledy-piggledy. There was no control. Uh, many routes were duplicated. And I don't think you could really expect that the railway network that grew up in the Victorian era before anyone had a car could survive in exactly the same way through to the 1960s when many families had cars. It, it was just a different world by then. But what I do appreciate very much is that so many people now are not only willing to put their money, but also their time, their passion, their voluntary work into restoring railways that have been closed for a, for a while. And we seem to be in a real peak period, a real heyday of heritage railways. Yeah, long before I made great British railway journeys, people asked me what was the highlight of my career. And I used to astonish most of them by saying, saving the settle to Carlisle Railway. Uh, in those days, people, most people didn't know what I was talking about. Obviously, rail enthusiasts would have done, but most people didn't. I, I'm, absolutely, I'm absolutely thrilled by the success of Great British Railway Jones. Um, it has been great. We're filming series two now, and we keep getting stopped by people in the street. Actually, it's getting in the way of filming, <laughs> because people keep coming up and saying that they've enjoyed uh, series one. I mean, I can't tell you that's the most satisfying possible thing for someone who makes television programs to find there's a real audience out there and people who are enjoying the shows. Railway enthusiasts very much enjoy picking up on the mistakes. I mean lots of people say, oh when you're on the train and then we saw the aerial it was a different train. But that's really a matter of economics. We can't fly the helicopter every day and if we put the helicopter up and the um, train company has run a different livery that day or a different length of train or if the Heritage Railway has put the engine on at the front rather than the back, we can't send the helicopter a second time. We just have to live with the mismatches. And we know that railway enthusiasts up and down the country will get a real satisfaction from picking up on the mistakes. Thank you very much. You can see Michael Portillo's programme early in the new year on BBC television. That's it for this edition of NYMR TV. We're going to leave you with pictures from the 60s event at Leversham Station. We look forward to seeing you again soon.